Okay, y'all. Just drop whatever you're doing and turn up your radio, cause it's time for body love. Here's what happened last time. So, what else you want to know? I told you all there is. You didn't tell me who's the mysterious kidney donor. Yeah, I see that. So you're the giver, and Sonny's just the taker. And that's how that works. No. See, that's the whole point. When he's drunk, Sonny's a taker. When he's not, he's a giver. He really is. Doctor says I can head on home, so... So, there's nothing wrong with you. He didn't say that. Uh, he says I gotta go to these dress management classes. Some stuff like that. And I could not be more proud of the opportunity God has given me to bless this dear sister in this way. And my attitude is, it is the sweetest, most generous offer. But the plain, simple truth is, I cannot accept it. Not even to save my own life. I cannot take a kidney from this man. And say that again! You heard me the first time. Listen, big sister, I know you got your own reasons for this, but don't be stupid. Take the kidney! Fidelia, it's not as simple as that and you know it. No, it isn't. Rosalind, don't think I don't know the risks, but I am willing to take them. I am eager to take them. No, Reverend. But Now listen, I had plenty of time to learn all about this. The surgery to donate a kidney is... Well, it's just like you always hear people tell you. They basically have to saw you in half. I do believe that's an exaggeration. No, I don't know. From what I've heard, that's about right. Fidelia! Listen, I'm trying to be delicate, but okay, I'll just say it. I think you're too old for this. That is not true. My doctor told me while I was in the hospital, a donor who is over 60 puts himself at a greater risk. But I am not over 60. How old are you? I'm 59. <laughs> Well, I am. No, I, I believe you. I'm, I just mean, well, 59, 60, what is that? I mean, 59 is old for some folks. 60 is young for other folks. Exactly. Rosalind, look. Dr. Richards called me in for a thorough examination. He said, pardon me for saying this, everyone, but he told me that I had the body of a man half my age. Oh, that is true. He's right about that. The point is, I believe he was telling me the truth when he said I should have no difficulty with this procedure. Do you... Do you remember that day in the solarium when I told you that there was a miracle coming your way? That I could feel it? Roz, what I felt was God placing his hand on me, blessing my body to do this service. Not just because it's what you need but because it's what he wants me to do. Whoa. Let's hear you argue with that. What does your wife say about all of this anyway? Well, I must tell the truth. Patricia does have some mixed feelings. Uh Uh-huh. So, look. I'll go this far. Let's you and me and Miles and Patricia talk about this together. Great. Roz, that's... You're right. That's what we need to do next. So you're saying you want the rest of us to get out of here. Is that what you're saying? Well, it is time for me to drain my catheter. So unless you want to stay for that... Okay, we're out of here. Can't believe my sister. Looking that man right in the face and telling him to keep his kidneys to himself. Lord. You don't you don't see that Rosalind would have the death of Fred Higgins on her conscience for the rest of her life? When did he die? Everybody's talking about him like he's dead. He's in better health than just about anybody, except for me and maybe two other folks. Fidelia, Rosalind's right. I mean, he's too old to be doing something like this. Well, even if he dies during surgery, that's the kind of Christian sacrifice he'd love to make. He's probably dreamed of dying like that. It could just end up being good for everybody, if you're asking me. Could be that's why nobody's asking you. Whew, 
I gotta slow down. It is mighty hot out here. I'm sweating like a pig. Don't you say nothing. I wasn't gonna. Whoa. I better sit down. In this heat? Are you nuts? Look, I'm tired and hot. And I'm sitting down for a minute to rest my feet. Okay. Now, see? You just proved my point. Your point? Yeah. I know I'm going to hate myself, but what's your point? You're too weak to go on. So you got to stop right here. Yeah. Well, if you can't make it, then you should be left behind. Same thing with Roz and Fred Higgins. If Rosalind doesn't get that kidney, then she dies. End of story. But if Higgins gives her one of his, she might live. But he might die giving it to her. How is that your point? Don't you get it? The strong go on. The weak get left behind. That's nature. That's how things are. You are unbelievable. You know that? Unbelievable! Yeah, I know. Well, I'll see you back at the house. Or not. Okay, got almost everything I need here. Just need to get my peace and inspiration going. Miles, sweetie, could you bring me a towel from the bathroom? I need something to support my back while I'm doing my, um... I know what you need it for, and I'm getting it as fast as I can. Here. It's the last clean towel we got. I haven't had time to do all of our laundry yet. Miles, sit down here, next to me, all right? Uh, not if you're about to do your dialysis. I mean, I'll I'll help you if you need me to, but it's just not... You can just sit over there, and I'll run my tube over here, okay? You don't have to watch me draining the poison out of my body if you're afraid it's going to make you sick. What's going on with us, Roz? Miles, I... We've been married 20 years and never talked to each other like we've been doing today. I guess this is all just... It's harder than I thought it was going to be. I know neither of us figured on me having a heart attack the same day you finally came from the hospital. Miles, it was not a heart attack. You had chest pain because you've been under stress that would just... Well, you got that part right. And and can we just... Can you turn that off for just... I mean, you've had the same music playing ever since. Okay, it's there. Now, don't change the subject. That was not a heart attack. Look, I don't care what the doctor said. I couldn't breathe. I felt suffocated, like I was drowning. I knew I was about to die. You can't imagine how scared I was. I I think I have a pretty good idea. And I tell you, I'm still feeling suffocated. No way out. You're gonna... You're gonna be hooked up to this thing four times a day for the rest of your life. I've missed so much time at work, there's no way I'm ever going to get the promotion we were counting on just to make ends meet. Miles. And now I've wrecked our car, and we got no way to get anywhere we need to go. Like, how am I going to get to work Monday morning? Now, I know Fred or Patricia Higgins will be glad to help you get to work. Nobody's going to let you miss work because of this. I've already had about enough charity from the Higgins family, all right? Miles. Have you heard of what they call the John Henry Syndrome? John Henry? Like the song? Hmm. He worked so hard trying to prove something that it killed him. And the world is full of black men your age who feel like they've got to show everybody how tough they are. I have never played that game. You know I don't care what people... Miles, whether you do it on purpose or not, you are always the one people think of as being the rock. All the time I was in the hospital, people were always telling me, Miles is taking this so well. He just seems to carry the world on his shoulders like it was nothing. I don't know how he does it. And now we're seeing how you did it. The truth is, it was killing you, and and you didn't let it show. So if I'd been sitting in the waiting room, crying like a baby last month, then I wouldn't have had the heart attack yesterday, or whatever it was? It was your body yelling at you to take some of the stress off of it for a while. The kind of pressure you've been under, it 
It's no joke. It's driving your blood pressure up and your immune system down. It can kill you. Oh, so you're a doctor now. Well, I've been spending a lot of time in hospitals lately. Enough to have learned that this John Henry thing is for real. Where you going? I was about to say just going to drive around. But I guess I won't be driving anywhere. Reckon I'll just walk around. Walking is better for you anyway. Any idea what time you'll be back? Please tell me you're not going to talk about this from the pulpit today. Patricia, I am not going to talk about all this from the pulpit today. But you know everybody else is going to be talking about it because they've been praying for a solid month for something good to happen. And now their prayers have been answered. People are going to talk about that. Fred, I don't think you're even listening to me about this. I know it's a good thing for Rosalind that her donor has been found. I just never dreamed it would be you lying on the operating table and... Well, I just can't even think about it. Can't imagine them cutting you open and... So tell me what were you thinking would happen. When you went in to get tested as a donor, didn't you think you might be the one? That's what I mean. I don't mind the idea of me going under the knife to help out our dear sister Rosalind. You just don't want me to do it. I don't... Well, I don't want Rosalind to get any worse or to keep on having dialysis on top of her diabetes. Well, I can't take away her diabetes, but I can help her get off dialysis forever. Forever, Patricia. Think about that. You know, you are talking to a registered nurse here. I mean, I do know what the transplant would mean for her. I know that. Let me ask you this, all right? If it was me who turned out to be the match, if it was me who was going to get cut open and have an organ removed in the hope of helping somebody else... You want the truth? Of course I want the truth. I'd be frightened of what might happen to you. And I'd be proud of your generosity and courage... And I tell you it was your decision. That's what I knew you'd say. Why did you... I almost forgot we were picking up Roz and Miles. And look at that. I've been trying to figure out what we were going to do with her wheelchair. And here she comes walking out to the car. With Miles just about holding her up, though. I'm going to help them. Oh, so you think we should help Rosalind any way we can. I am not going to answer that right now, and you know it. Good morning, you two. Good morning. Amen. (laughs) Vanessa. Vanessa, I wanted to catch you before you got away. Oh, I'm in no rush today. What's... how can I... Just wondering... If you and I can sit down somewhere for maybe five minutes and talk, just you and I. Well, yes, of course. I just, I need to keep up with the kids. Well, the little one anyway, because Maya's staying for choir practice and... Now, TJ is in the nursery with Miss Griffith. I asked her if she'd mind staying a little bit late with him, and she said it'd be her pleasure. Well, and Saul's going home with my folks for lunch, so there you go. Sunday lunch with Mabel and (laughs) Moe. Saul's a lucky young man. Yeah, he said it was going to be good to eat some real food for a change. But mm, I'm guessing you want to talk about Rosalind. You are her best friend in all the world, and you know her. Well, you probably understand her better than Miles does. So I'm hoping you can help me figure out a way to get her to accept this gift. Well, I don't know if I can help, but I'll try. Speaking of, she got out of here in a hurry. Miles, too. Where... Patricia wanted to take them to lunch today. And knowing Roz has to get home pretty soon, I imagine they're halfway to the restaurant by now. Now, y'all just tell me where you want to eat lunch, and I'll take you there. Patricia, I already told you. Roz and I need to eat at home. She's got to do her dialysis on a strict schedule and she can't eat just anything. Miles, baby, calm down. As long as we can get in and out pretty quick, I'll be on schedule. And I have finally learned what I can eat and what I can't. How about the grill? I've been missing the grill. Sounds good to me. Okay, 
But just don't forget, you have to eat right for a diabetic and for somebody with renal failure. I think I'll remember that. So, it must be great to be out of that hospital room and out here under the blue sky. Oh, you've got that right. One reason I don't want to go into any kind of surgery anytime soon, I feel like I've done my hospital time already. Still, if it's going to get you off dialysis, I mean, you know, I've had some powerfully mixed feelings about all of this, but I'll tell you... Can we talk about something else for ten minutes? I am sick and tired of everybody talking about this round the clock ever since Ross came home. Miles, that was only yesterday. I don't care if it was 15 years ago. I'm sick of it. Sick of almighty Fred Higgins setting himself up to be a saint and you turning him down just so you can be a martyr. Miles, what in God's name is the matter with you? I have never heard you talk like this in all the time. Yeah, and we've never had this much garbage coming down on us. You know, Miles, you didn't ask for my opinion, but as a nurse, I can tell you that it's very common for you... You got that right. I did not ask for your opinion. Okay. Right here. Patricia, stop the car. Stop right here. Miles, come on now. Well, I did say I'd take you anywhere. But you know the preacher's wife does not eat Sunday lunch any place that serves liquor on the Lord's Day. This is just not something I'm willing to do. Well, you know what? It sure as hell is something I'm willing to do. Guess we're going in after him. Let me just get on to my house. Will you do that for me? Just drive me on to my house. Now you better be here again next time to hear what's going to happen on Body Love.